always give up. <laughs> I'm Rex, this is Daniel, this is Famous Grouse. From Matt Roth. Matt Roth, you magnificent. Fight. Oh, Daniel got in on that I one. Did, I he did, He usually it. just kind of like in the background, but no, he just, he... Matt Roth. Yep. He sends a little note. Finest Scotch whiskey. He said, after watching your videos, I'm determined I'm that guy. <laughs> In the military, I traveled to Fort Knox each year for training. Last year, I was able to sneak away and visit distilleries. Yeah. Uh, instantly fell in love with bourbon, got home, discovered your channel, replaced all the liquor in my cabinet with whiskey. <laughs> uh, one of the lucky few tried Lafroig 10 because you guys like it and liked it. Oh, lovely. Yep. Good. Now he's got a fantastic selection, found where he belongs, <gasps> and he thanks us. Okay, gosh. Oh, there's another, man. So, I, where, where are you usually pulling comments from? Yeah. Is it YouTube channels? YouTube. First, first place you go. First place is YouTube. Yeah. Second place, uh, uh, the Facebook group. Okay. Third place, the Reddit. Okay, so you hit boom, 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 then you get your comments. Yeah. Okay, because I will often see a post or a comment in any one of those places and then I'll put it in Slack and I'll forget about it for weeks. But if it's truly amazing and I see it, it'll eventually see the light of day. Right. Now, go ahead and start one. talking. I'll have to find it. Go ahead okay. And, yeah. This is Famous Grouse yeah. was the number one, may still be the number one uh, blended scotch in Scotland, second in the UK uh, at one time. Um, and Dates all the way back to 1800s when, what's his name, Matthew Glog, I'm pronouncing it wrong, but it's G-L-O-A-G, Glog, sure. Right. Um, he was a wine uh, merchant. Mm -hmm. He lived in Perth, Scotland. When the queen came to visit, they tasked him with uh, taking over on doing all the food and wine and getting them whiskey. Right. So he did the thing merchants did back then, which is source some whiskeys and create a blend. Yeah. And it became the Grouse, okay. is what it was called. Yeah, yeah. And then eventually the famous Grouse, yeah. and then eventually got the Royal Warrant yeah. to, to uh, provide whiskey for the Royals. My, so, 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 on the nose, I'm not, I'm not going to talk about Grouse. I have a Grouse story. Oh, do you? When, yeah, I, Who has a Grouse no. story? <laughs> okay, Let's anyway. talk about the whiskey. Okay, so, Apple and Ash. <laughs> on the nose. Okay. Apple juice, you're stuck on the grouse story okay. in your head. <laughs> the grouse story. So. Uh, okay, yeah, apple and ash. And then there's a little bit, there's a tiny little, little, uh, little layer, thin layer of nail polish. Yeah, and then there's a little bit of honey. Yeah, that's the alcohol. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not quite, it's, it's in between nail polish and varnish. Yeah, you but it, and it's thin, it's not overwhelming. It doesn't, no, no, ruin, no. It doesn't ruin it. No, it doesn't. I actually kind of like the nose on this. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it, it's uh, it's a somewhat unique combination of of uh, of layers, of now, flavors. This is another one. I don't know if you guys know this in whiskey history, but one of the reasons whiskey sort of took over the world mm -hmm. when wine was king okay. was because of the beetle that wiped out almost the entire wine industry. Oh. Right? And uh, people weren't like, well, I guess there's no wine. We'll stop drinking. <laughs> They're like, no, what else can we drink? And whiskey stepped in and filled that gap. You know what? During that time, right. these guys went from wine merchants to sourcing whiskey. This is a bad note, and I know, as I say this, it's going to lead you down the wrong path. It's spider webs, man. I walked through a bunch you of spider webs. I spider walked through webs. spider webs. I did. It's going to read you down, lead you down the wrong path. Do not overemphasize, do not take with too much gravity what I'm about to say. But of all of the rums that I've tried, mm. there is, on most of those rums, a little bit of a thin almond sweetness that I'm finding oh. in that. Yeah, I can see what you mean by that. Right. Now, it's not, it's not rummy, rummy. But there's an, an element to a lot of rums that I'm finding in here. I'm also getting a little bit of brine, which is weird, like a salt. I would equate that to that thin layer of the nail polish remover. Maybe, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the taste is actually nice. Maybe it's just because of the first thing I'm doing today. Oh. But I like this. A little thin? Yeah, it's definitely thin. It's and definitely they, a budget blend. Hold on, hold on. I'm not a fan of the finish. Everything leading up to the finish I really dig. Wish it was uh, just a few percent higher proof. Yeah. But for what, what is this, like low 40s? Yeah, I want to compare this to 40, 40%. the red. Yeah. Because I think it's in a similar price point. 80 proof. Now, I found that comment. You ready? Yeah, bring it on. 
Uh, this is from the Whiskey Tribe subreddit. Posted by Black Hole Z32. It finally happened. Taste. <laughs> I taste things. Uh, I spent a week in Kentucky a month ago. Uh, tried a ton of whiskey, like some more than others, but I struggled to articulate the flavors that I was preferring or disliking. I could usually pick out the wood tan ends or tell the difference between a rye and a bourbon, but it took something pretty drastic to really stand out for me. I'm not sure what happened though, but in the last week my tongue very suddenly got very articulate and I'm finally starting to pick out flavors that are talked about in whiskey. The molasses, the cinnamon, the apple. I've also found myself liking standard bourbons a lot more than I did before. Usually I was preferring the milder, smaller batches. Yeah. Something that may have been a factor was the guys describing a tasting method where you hold the whiskey under your tongue for about 10 seconds mm -hmm. and then slowly swallowing. I found this very effective, very effective. Kentucky chew. Very effective and has been using it since. So yeah, cool. Finally, finally able to taste the whiskey and Dude, that's, pick out those different layers. That's real. I find that every time I talk to somebody who loves whiskey and can understand tasting notes, and they talk about that. They will talk about the moment that it wasn't this gradual change from right. nothing to something. Right. It was like nothing, nothing, nothing. Holy sh. Right. There right. it is. There it is. And so Lou Bryson and tasting whiskey. Right. He called that the wall. Okay. Right. You you're up. There's a wall that's just this is alcohol. This burns. And then all of a sudden one day, bam! You'll break through. Okay. And the whole world opens up for you. That is absolutely real. Hmm. Now try the Johnny Walker Red because the difference between these is I think they are both the same quality and the same category of flavor profile. But the Johnny Walker Red is a little more ashy, whereas ashy and less complexity on the sweet yes, layers. And the Grouse has all the floral sweetness and instead of the ash. I wonder if the Johnny Walker Red is kind of like they're they're a little bit more leaning toward the tail cuts of. I, no, what they're, they're blending, making, right? Okay. So th they're not cutting. They're blending. They're just a blending. Mix of all different distilleries, right? Because I get a lot of flavors that I would tr traditionally equate to in the tails. tails. You get well, it's a bit because heavier, they're ashier. blending probably a little bit more of the ashy island peated stuff, okay. which has more tails in it. Uh, John Clark took a look at the calendar, so the Whiskey Tribe calendar mm. on the Whiskey Tribe website, and it just so happens that your dry week begins this week. No, no. Begins the week I'm visiting Austin and the distillery. <laughs> this is deeply offensive to me. <laughs> Clearly a personal attack. Yes. So yeah, we actually. Uh, you know we, we should do this. With, we called your family. You know we should do this totally self-serving. We looked it up. The tribe dry week is now totally mandatory. Yeah. <laughs> and the only exception is at our distillery. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like a safe, safe spot. It's an oasis. Of yeah. Right. right there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, we got another one. You got another one. So All this right. is from, well, I'll let you do it first. So this is Mike Callahan. Mike Callahan, you magnificent bastard. Fight. Now, Mike Callahan sent us several whiskeys. We're going to do more of them tomorrow. Okay. But this is Alaska mm -hmm. called Denali. Now, they're a brewing company. And from looking them up, I'd never heard uh, of them. I'm not a big beer guy. <laughs> So, don't, again. Don't, don't be overly concerned. Okay. It's not super beery, but okay. I'm thinking, man, I'm like like a malty beer type of yeah. sweetness here. It it stands it stands perfectly on its own as a whiskey. Okay. It's not a beer doing a you know, faint imitation of a I whiskey. I really love this but, bottle. But the beery roots, I believe it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's a beautiful bottle. It's a cool bottle. You know, why, cool? you know why Daniel likes it? Because it's dark. Because it's black. Yeah. It's a black bottle. I just like it. He just likes Okay. Oh, I'm getting some multi. This is, uh, these guys are in um, Talkeetna. That's what it is. Talkeetna, Alaska. I can't believe I'm oh, blank okay. on that one. It's about two hours north of Anchorage, and it's a climbing town, among other things. So maybe they're on the tundra. Their year-round uh, population is around 800 people. Yeah. And so this brewery opened up. And it's one of the only businesses in town that provides year-round uh, jobs oh. for the locals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was which very, is pretty cool, very right? Very seasonal up there. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, but it's a sort of an unofficial town base camp for people attempting to climb Mount Denali. Okay. Right? Yeah. And so, you know climbers, they like to drink. So okay. they went to beer and then eventually expanded into spirits. This one is specifically... I'm trying to... So. Oh, whoa. Okay, yeah. I'm here it is. a sweet maltiness. And I'm struggling to describe that sweet layer yeah, what's, more than that. So it's uh, two-row malt, Munich malt, wheat malt, and that's it. And then uh, water. Okay. I'm getting it. Oh, honey malt. A as nice, well. A nice sweet maltiness. I actually, uh, 
I'm getting less of the beer thing than I thought I was gonna get. No, no, no. Yeah, again, and, and huh. so uh, it's really hard it, it, when, whenever you're getting brand new to whiskey. Talking about the very big, broad strokes, cornerstone elements of a whiskey, the things that are gonna be the most basic and, and uh, present. That's a lot easier whenever you're fairly new to whiskey. Yes. Once you've had, you know, over a thousand whiskeys, well, or even just a, like, you know, damn near a hundred whiskeys. You're bringing a lot of expectations. Well, all of a sudden, the stuff that's just obvious and expected, and of course that's there, you don't even mention that. And right. you start talking about the outliers, and the outliers aren't going to be the most helpful for the vast majority of people that are watching a show trying to get the notes. Malty, sweet, and that sweetness is like a sweet uh, walnut. Yeah, and it was heavy malty at first, but yeah. now it's going more towards the sweet walnut. It unlocked that sweet walnut for me. Oh, that's really nice. It's a little sweet for me. It's a, but it's like a honey beer. You know what it with is? With a little extra proof. It's um, it's not heavy handed. It's a little delicate, nuanced thing. Yeah, it's light. It almost reminds me of mead. Okay. Yeah. Well, the the, the but with the proof, like the honey, the kick. like yeah, the honey, yeah, yeah, the honey sweetness. The hun it's like the honey mead with a high proof and a little bit of the barrel impact. Ninety six proof, forty eight percent alcohol. So I think it's a good proof for that to be at. Dude, this that's drinkable as <laughs> <laughs> man. If I was if I was in a little town of eight hundred people and yeah. I'm just hanging out, I would put away far too much of this whiskey. I bet so, it's amazing on ice. That, that high sweet honey. Like a floral layer, mm -hmm. but the thing that makes it interesting is you got this nice base of uh, like a candied walnut, mm -hmm. that maltiness, and it really is a candied walnut. Right, like it is that sweet. Mm. I'm adding a little water. The water brings out more of the malt. I like the hell out of that. Mm -hmm. That's really nice. Oh, dude, that's a um, well done. Yeah, yeah. Tasty. Uh, my wife says, "Life of bliss." My wife, honey. Why are you smelling our son's diaper, Janie? <laughs> <laughs> Me, just looking for new nosing and tasting notes. <laughs> My wife, damn it, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the bags. Yeah. <laughs> it's the clean bags. Don't go. Not the dirty diaper genius. <laughs> now, it makes me wonder, like, so one of the things I did when I was trying to train my nose, and I still do this, is, yeah. and uh, and actually, so did Eric Waite. Eric Waite talked about this on camera. Oh, yeah. Uh, the Eric uh, Waite Whiskey Studies. So yeah, yeah. YouTube, another YouTube channel. And, and it, it was, uh, every time he found a tasting note of something he didn't recognize, mm -hmm. like black currants. Yeah. He went and found black currants and bought them sure. so that he could see what the original smell was that everyone's referencing. Yeah, yeah. Right? And that's a really great way to train your nose and palate. Uh, going around smoking diaper genies, maybe <laughs> the low end of the totem pole on that one. But, <laughs> but it makes me wonder how many times we've given weird tasting notes and someone's felt obligated to be like, all right, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Challenge accepted. Son of a bitch. All right, here's the fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight me, I fight for a friend. You steal, may you steal a lover's heart. And if you drink, may, may you drink, drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw on a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.